Do you think that Bill Gates worries about you? No. Um, I think he thinks about Linux a lot because I just think that he's a person who likes to be in control. I mean, Microsoft is, is his baby. And he worries about anything that keeps his baby from being number one. And Linux is one of those things. I don't think he really, really worries deep down because he can always look at his, look at his pile of cash and then say, okay, I'm okay. <laughs> right? So. Do you see that uh, somewhere down the line that Linux is going to be bigger than Microsoft? I think this Microsoft is going to be smaller than Microsoft. That Microsoft is obviously in an enviable position from a market sense right now. But at the same time, this is what, what's called despotism, to control a resource. And that's what happened in the Old West when, when people controlled the resource of water mm -hmm. and became very rich in the process. It's a powerful tool for, for making money, uh, but it does have one downside. And the one downside is that it never lasts forever. And when, when it breaks as a tool, uh, you've lost everything. And that's going to happen. So is this just internal transmeta or actually no, it's external too? Yes, design power. Oh. You're working for a company that eventually hopes to have an initial public offering. You have stakes in a number of uh, Linux IPOs. Have you become a capitalist? I'm actually a big believer in, in market forces. I, I think that money is a wonderful tool as a kind of universal barter. It's not interesting in itself, but it is interesting as a kind of phenomenon and what you can do with it. Torvald says he lives for the moment. His only plan for the future is to keep working on interesting projects. For Torvalds, that means writing software, something he calls art. And what makes software exciting to me is that you still have to be an engineer in the sense that you have to make something that works. And you have to make something that is stable, something that can take a two-ton bus going over the bridge kind of thing. But at the same time, you have much more freedom than you have when you're building a bridge or a, a building. Uh, you can pretty much make up your own rules to a large degree. And, and it's, it is art history, at least for good, good programmers. There's a lot of uh, art in there. Plus you get paid, which you usually don't get if you paint pictures, right, so... <laughs> Venus Torvalds, a mover who gave away his first masterpiece for free. A step that put him on a road to fame and fortune. That's the three. That's the three, no. <laughs>